This is a photo that a friend of mine took two weeks ago. I was in Greenland next to all these icebergs, and I'm way, way, way up on this cliff. This iceberg's right there, um, about 100 meters high, so you get a sense of the scale of the icebergs that are coming off of Greenland right now. And I was driving over here, and it just kind of clicked a picture of the interdependence of the world we're in right now. The carbon dioxide that has come out of the tailpipe of my car and out of my house and the power plants that make my electricity have warmed the Earth that have led to the uh, Earth to warm a good bit globally, but three times as much in Greenland. So three times warmer up there. That's now leading these icebergs to calve off of the land on the ice pack on Greenland four times faster than 30 years ago. Each iceberg raises the sea level on the outer banks, Cape Hatteras, <laughs> just a little bit. The fact that we're having another world, of course, we all know about climate change, it's really important. The urgency hit me seeing change happening at this kind of scale. And my dream is, as we con are concerned about Cape Hatteras, or the drought that's going on, or the intensity of hurricanes, or the people in Bangladesh, whatever really uh, concerns you, the vision that I have is that Asheville gets to be a center of action towards addressing things like climate change around sustainability. And particularly, we've got the place to do it. We've got NCDC over here with all the data, like the world's biggest repository of data. We have a design community, creativity artists who are able to take the data and put it into forms that are re really compelling. And we walk our talk here. Anyone notice that? We really do walk our talk. So we have the kind of standing and credibility to be able to say, here are some ways to address climate change, and not just theoretical ways, but we can say, hey, look what we're doing in our town, look what we're doing in our homes. I want to talk to you a little bit about the contribution that we're making, a very small one, in a very small part of the world trying to address sustainability. I'm part of the Sustainability Institute. We're based in New England. I happen to be the one Southeast person, but we're hiring somebody this week for growing our, our center. I want to talk a little bit about what we think is a, what we call a leverage point on climate change. Here's what's going on internationally. The nations of the world are coming together, and right now, China is saying, we will reduce our carbon emissions intensity 20%. And the European Union says, well, we will reduce our absolute emissions 20% by 2020. And the United States says, well, we're not going to do so much quite yet. And then India and China kind of come together with their different commitments. At this point, there is no way to add it all up to say, are we getting anything when it comes to the kind of climate impacts we really want? It's kind of like you go to friends, up to your friends for dinner, you get the bill at the end, people throw in a five, they throw in a 20, they throw in 23 cents, and nobody can add up all the money to say, are we paying the bill? The quote from our colleague in the United Nations, Christiana Figueres, there's a dangerous void of understanding of the short and long-term impacts of all of the commitments that different parties are playing internationally. We just don't know if it's all adding up to get us the results we want for Greenland and for Cape Hatteras, et cetera. So that's why we're building some models that supplement what exists today. Now the models that can put together all the information that can add up the change at the end of your drinking session with your friends, they exist, but they're scientific models. They're just research models. They take weeks to run. They take thousands of dollars to run. And you have to go hire someone at Pacific Northwest Laboratories to run what they call a global climate model, these huge models. What we've done and what our expertise is is taking those models, simplifying them, and putting them in a form where you could go on the internet or on my laptop, you could actually use it in a session where we put together these various commitments and quickly simulate what actually happens. This is the prototype of the model that here in North Asheville, we are building based on a model that we've been working on for 10 years. This is the version that will be on the internet, which allows you to change emissions over here. What if China does this? What if Brazil does that with sequestration? What if Uruguay does that? What does it do to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? sea level rise in temperature. So it's on the internet so that anyone could actually go and make these tests. Um, just this afternoon, the big news is that we got invited to the next step in the UN process. So we go into Poznan, Poland, which is the next UN negotiation in November. And then on to Copenhagen, where a lot of these decisions are coming together. It's the next Kyoto Agreement we have in, um, in 2009. 
we also like to take the models, and you've heard all this data visualization around climate. We make graphs that show, and this is the historic emissions from 1900 to 2100. The blue is the United States, the European Union, China. Different ways for policymakers and decision makers to understand what has been the history of this problem, and then what if? What if we actually do reduce emissions 80% by 2050, or 30%? What would it look like for emissions over time? What would it look like for sea level rise, for temperature, for other effects? I don't have the time to show you all this. It's really fun to play with the model and do it more interactively, but um, this is just some of the pictures that we end up making with it. For people to do anything with these models, they need to be more than totally geeked out numbers and pictures on a computer. So we embed the models in policy exercises, negotiation exercises. So two months ago, we went to uh, Washington, D.C., where they had a two and a half day war game. So they brought people from China, these guys, people from India, people from Europe, and the United States. Tom Daschle played for the U.S., so he was the lead negotiator. They said, you have two and a half days. John Podesta, Clinton's chief of staff, was the secretary general. And they simulated a two and a half day negotiation. They used our model to add up, as I said before, all the commitments. So these guys said, we'll do this. These guys said, we'll do that. Our model was the thing that integrated all of the commitments and said, well, you've got a world in 2100 that looks like this, this, this. Try again. So they went back and <laughs> aimed a little higher or tried to reduce their emissions a little bit more. We've also developed a version that we run, and actually we're going to be running in Asheville while well, well, I'll be talking to folks at NEMAC and some of them at NEMAC. Um, and any other organization would like to do it. We want to host a running of this game. We can do it in two hours, not two days. But get a bunch of people together and simulate this international negotiation. We're calling it the Copenhagen Climate Exercise. Um, we also have a simulation we're, we're working on for an electric utility that we're building with Free Range Studios and Rocky Mountain Institute. We're using these really cute little characters to introduce the drama of nuclear and demand side management and energy efficiency, and wind and biomass as the kind of future we could see on electric utilities and climate. The last thing is, we can't fly around and get these ideas out quickly enough. We have a team of 12. We've been trying to share these models um, and these ideas. So we've chosen to use open source approaches to give the models away. This is an animation that we made uh, that's built by Schlumberger. You can go on the web and, and find it. We said, anyone want to translate into Chinese? And so this is a Chinese version. So somebody just translated into Chinese. We give them the code. They didn't, we didn't pay them anything. They translated into Chinese and Arabic and French and Spanish. So we've assembled a group of organizations and been funded by Citigroup, Fidelity, Nike, and Schlumberger, working with MIT and these nonprofits, to give away all the models, all of the interfaces, and then all the media we create with it so that people can do things we never imagined. Imagine a Google Earth application where somebody could go and type in emissions from different countries and see sea level rise that would result. I can't do that. Maybe somebody here can, but someone in the world could if we give away these models. So these guys have asked us to create something we call Climate Interactive, an effort to use open source approaches to give this away to kind of spark the creativity of the world, to lead, as Stephen was saying, knowledge, the, model, the insights of all these brilliant scientific models on these huge computers and research labs into action. People learning something about it and then going doing something, with a doing something, of course, growing more trees to sequester carbon, reducing fossil fuel emissions all over the world. The principles here, um, transparency of the models, using an open source approach, and trying to cross, close the gap between knowledge and action. And the opportunities, I'd say, to put out to the world, it's going to take a village to do this. We're good at one part of it, translating the models into something that people can use in the world. We need people who are creative when it comes to web development, into design, into engaging the open source world, into facilitation of pulling people together, into figuring out what to actually do on the ground in our buildings, in our energy utilities, with legislation. I mean, it's going to take a village. And part of the reason I'm finally leaving my office in North Asheville and coming to events like this is I really want Asheville to deliver on the, the promise of NCDC, the design and arts community, and a community that walks the talk on sustainability to actually go do something about it.
This is some information. Um, we've got a blog where you can read kind of all, all the stuff I just talked about is on the blog with pictures and video. The, the open source effort is called Climate Interactive. You can see it here. And hear us at Sustainability Institute. Send me an email or I'll have a piece of paper up here if you want to come play our game. So thank you for the time. Thank you to you guys for bringing me out. And uh, I hope we can work together on all this. <laughs>